Welcome back to the Ichi Mahjong Guide. So now that we've got all the basic aspects of Mahjong out of the way, we're ready to talk about elements of scoring in Japanese Mahjong. So we're not going to get too, too deep into it right now. I'm just going to give a, a quick overview in this video, and uh, we're going to cover it more in detail over the next several videos. In Japanese Mahjong, the value of your hand is determined by the Han and Fu of your hand. The Han value of your hand is determined mostly by the yaku that your hand applies for, but each dora is also counted as one han. We're going to talk about more about yaku and han later, but in this video we're going to be talking about fu, or in English they're called mini points. Generally, when figuring out the score of your hand, the fu is secondary to han, but it's still important, so that's what we're going to go over in this video. For every hand, you start with a base of 20 fu. 20 is the absolute lowest amount of fu that you can have. In general, hands are worth 30 or more fu. There are a couple exceptions, but uh, we're going to talk about those when we get to those yaku, because there are specific yaku where the hands uh, is only worth a certain amount of fu because of the yaku. But in any case, we're going to talk about the basics of calculating fu in this video. So the first thing you consider when determining the fu value of your hand is how you won the hand. If you won by don, meaning that you won off of someone else's discard, and your hand is completely closed, meaning that you did not uh, call anyone else's discards before that point, then you get 10 fu. So you're automatically at least 30 fu at that point. Uh, however, if, you, if your hand is open and you win by don, you don't get that. So it's only if your hand is closed completely and you win by them. The other thing is that you get two fu for winning by tsumo, regardless of whether your hand is open or closed. The next thing we're going to consider is the weight that you were on when you were in Tenpai. Certain weights are worth fu and certain weights are not. So we're gonna go into the ones that are. The first one is a penchan. This is the pattern that we've gone over before where you either have a 1-2 or an 8-9, and you're waiting on that only one tile to complete the sequence. Uh, in this case, it would be either a 3-so or a 7-peen. Uh, if you're just waiting on that one tile for a penchan, that is worth 2-fu. Another uh, weight pattern that is also worth 2-fu is a kanchan. So again, if you're just waiting on that one middle tile to uh, win the hand, that is worth 2-fu. The last weight pattern that is worth fu is a tanki. So essentially, if you have all of your uh, sets of three, your four sets of three all done, you're just waiting on one tile to pair up to become your pair to win the hand, that is worth two fu. One pattern that we've covered before is a nobetan, which is essentially two tanki weights. Either you have six, seven, eight, waiting on a pair for the nine, or you have seven, eight, nine, waiting on a pair for the six. This counts as a tonki weight. It's just a tonki weight two times over. So either way, it counts for food. This is different from a vyanmen, a two-sided weight, uh, which is not worth any food. So here we have a two, three of manzu and we're waiting on either the one or the four. This is not worth any food. The last weight pattern that we went over was a uh, shankon or a double pon weight, where essentially you're waiting to win by making one of these two pairs into a triplet. This weight pattern is not worth fu, but as we're going to go over next, the triplet that you make from this weight pattern is worth fu. And that transitions into the next way to earn fu, which is from triplets. In your hand, sequences are not worth any fu, but triplets and uh, quads or cons are. And how much fu you gain from the set depends on what the tile is. If it is a numbered tile, two through eight, that's called a simple, and those are worth less than numbered tiles one or nine, which are called terminals. And triplets of terminals are worth the same amount of foo as corresponding triplets of honor tiles. So essentially there's two categories here for triplets. There's either simples, which are numbered tiles two through eight, or terminals and honors, which are just one, nine, or any of the winds or dragon tiles. So we're gonna go over the simples first. The least amount of foo you can get from a triplet is an open 
triplet of simple fouls. That's just worth two foo. However, if it's closed, meaning that you had the triplet in your hand already, that is worth four foo. So if it's closed, you just doubled it. For terminal or honor tiles, they're worth double. So for instance, uh, an open triplet of simples is worth two, but an open triplet of terminals or honors is worth four. So it's pretty easy. You just remember open simples is the lowest, two. And if it's closed like this, you double it, or if it's terminals or honors, you double it. So similarly, if it's a closed triplet of terminals, it's worth eight. Very, very simple. It's just all multiples of two. The next thing we're gonna go over are cons. So going back to our simples example, let's say we had an open con. However, it doesn't matter what type of open con it was, show me con or die mean con, it's worth the same. It's worth eight. So it's essentially the open triplet, which is worth two times four, so eight. Easy to remember times four because it's a con, which is four tiles. And if it's closed, it's worth 16, so easy. A closed triplet is worth four, but then when it becomes a closed con, times another four, 16, very easy. It's the same thing with uh, terminals. If it's an open con of terminals or honor tiles, it is worth 16 because an open triplet is worth four, you make it a con and it's multiplied by four, so 16. And if you have a closed triplet, it's worth eight. Make it a closed con, multiply that eight by four and you get 32. So this is the most foo you can get from one of your four sets. It's 32 from a closed con of terminals or honor tiles. So it's all very easy, multiples of two, easy to remember. And again, this isn't the most important part of the scoring, but it's good to know. One more way to get foo is from your pair. Now, only certain pairs are worth foo. A pair of any of the dragon tiles is worth two foo. That's it. That's, it's very simple. Just if it's a pair of the dragon tiles, it's worth two. For the wind tiles, it's a little bit different. If it is the round win, so for instance, let's say it's the east round, and your pair is the east, that's worth two foo. Your east pair is worth two foo in the east round. Similarly, if it's south, your pair of south is worth two foo. Another way the wins can be worth foo is based on your seating. So for instance, if you are west, meaning you're sitting across from east, and you have a pair of west, that is worth two foo. The same thing with north. If you are sitting north and you have a pair of north, that's worth two foo. This, um, this stacks with the foo you gain from it being the round win. So if you are east and it is east, this pair is worth four foo. Two from being the round win and two from being your wind. The same thing with south. If you are south and it is south, it is worth four foo. The last thing I want to cover is... If your hand is open, meaning that you've called on someone else's tiles, but it's not worth any foo because you didn't sumo with it, you got a roan on someone, and it was all sequences, so there's no triplets or cons to add foo, and you didn't have a pair of um, a dragon or a, a specific wind tile to add foo, that hand gets two foo for being what's called open peen foo. And you don't have to understand what that means right now, but just, just know that any open hand is at least 30 foo. The only hands that can be below 30 foo are hands that qualify for a specific yaku that require the hand to be closed. That's all you need to know about open peen foo right now. So that's it for this video about uh, basic scoring elements and how to count foo. Starting from the next video, we're going to be talking about yaku. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And thank you for watching.